I want you to listen very carefully. This will contain Spider-Man Far From Home spoilers. Now let's break down the post credit scenes. <laughs> Hey guys, Jake Mellor here again. Did you enjoy Spider-Man Far From Home? Oh, you haven't seen it yet? But you're dying to know what the post credit scenes are? And you want to know what's next for the MCU? That's okay, I'm here to help. So let's break it down. And if you're new here, I do movie reviews, reactions, theories, and the occasional vlog. So make sure to hit that subscribe button down below if that's something that interests you. And as I said, this contains massive Spider-Man Far From Home spoilers. So let's backtrack to the end of the movie, where Peter uses his spider senses, sorry, his Peter tingle, to defeat Mysterio, and to double check he's dead, he uses the AI glasses known as Edith, and he's not seeing any illusions going around. So he must be dead, right? I don't think so. And let me just start by saying, I loved how they used Mysterio as a backdoor to the past MCU films, and kind of expanding and filling in a bit of the picture. See, because Mysterio uses the bath tech from Captain America Civil War, and he's actually the one who invented it. But Tony being Tony fires Mysterio, and that's clearly Hero Mistake 101 you're almost insured to make a villain from that. And because of that, he bands together with other past Stark employees, including, which is what I really liked, the scientist guy who Obadiah Stain yells at in the first Iron Man. I just love little things like that. And they kind of band together as a film crew, with Mysterio being the ringleader, to kind of create like a film set. Except instead of using cameras and things like that, he uses bath technology and weaponized drones to create these illusions whilst giving real world damage. And that was a great take on the comics. I knew Mysterio was gonna be a bad guy because I've read the comics, but the the way that they approached it gave it a real modernized feeling, and I really like that. Anyway, I just need to tell you that to just give you a bit of context. Now, the first post credit scene. So, Peter, in his Spider Man getup, goes out with MJ, doing a bit of swinging through the city. As they land, they see on the big screen, kind of like you'd see in New York, a news report comes up. And who is it? J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson. Holy! That blew me away. And I liked it as well because they put a modernized take on it. Nobody buys papers anymore. So in this incarnation, he's kind of like an online news reporter. And so in this scene, J. Jonah Jameson shows a clip of the final fight between Mysterio and Spider-Man. But in this clip, it's been re-edited and recontextualized by Mysterio in order to make Spider-Man look like the bad guy. And so in this clip is it shows or appears to show that Spider-Man kills Mysterio, which granted he does, but in a different context and makes it look like Spider-Man used the drones to create the destruction and he himself is wanting to become the new Iron Man instead of Mysterio. So basically everything that Mysterio was doing in the film, they made it look like Peter was doing it, which obviously makes Mysterio look like the hero. So at the end of the film, Mysterio says, set up the contingency plan. And so this obviously is part one of the contingency plan to make Spider-Man look like the bad guy. Part two, J. Jonah Jameson next goes on to say, the vigilante known as Spider-Man is none other than Peter Parker. And boom, right up on the big screen, Peter Parker's face. Now this sets up a lot, and this is either gonna be played out in the next Spider-Man film as a big arc, or it could even impact the overall arc of the MCU, because they do throw in little nuggets to help impact it. And you see in the comics, when Spider-Man's secret identity is revealed, that opens up all the villains to start hunting Peter, to start hunting Mary Jane, which I guess in this case would be MJ, and all the other people in Peter's life that are important to him. And I like how they set this up, because throughout the movie, he's really trying to hide his secret identity, really be secretive, they've got the special black suit so his school trip doesn't know, and now the whole world knows Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Now they've done this in pretty much every Spider-Man movie, but I felt in this one they did it organically, because I think this is probably the first movie where Spider-Man didn't have an immediate connection to the villain. You know, because the Green Goblin is his best friend's father, Otto Octavius is his mentor, the Sandman killed Uncle Ben, the Vulture was his girlfriend's dad, and so on. It's never Jim from up the street, is it? So yeah, that's big. We have J. Jonah Jameson, his identity is now known, and it seems like he doesn't have any of the Avengers to back him up. So I'm really interested to see what's to come for Spider-Man. And as I said, I don't think Mysterio is dead, and I'm hoping that they start pushing for a Sinister Six. Because yeah, Spider-Man 3 and The Amazing Spider-Man 2, they really tried to push it too hard. But the word I like to use in this video is organic, because I find they've been pushing organically for a Sinister Six movie. I mean, think about it. We've got the Scorpion and Michael Keaton's The Vulture from Spider-Man Homecoming. We've got Mysterio from Spider-Man Far From Home. Throw in a Norman Osborn and we're pretty much all Almost there. And we don't know who bought the Avengers Tower yet. I honestly did think they were going to give it away as a big reveal during Spider-Man Far From Home, and it was going to be Oscorp. But they didn't. I think they did show the building, but they didn't show any names or anything. And so the second post credit scene, to see what was coming forward for Spider-Man, this one I think is much bigger and much more for the overall scope of the MCU. And that is that Nick Fury and Maria Hill turned out to be Skrulls. And not just any Skrulls, it was Talos and his wife from Captain Marvel. So they've clearly kept in connection. And so it was 
revealed that Nick Fury was sent on a semi-holiday, but the holiday wasn't a real holiday. He was actually in space, in orbit, on a massive space station. And it was very reminiscent of the Sword Space Station from in the comics. What's the Sword Space Station? Well, I'm glad you asked. Whereas S.H.I.E.L.D. is an organisation for Earth-based threats, Sword is more of an organisation that's set up for space-based threats. You know, kind of like the first line of defence and gather and tell them, things like that. Now here's my theory. My theory is Nick's been working with the Skrulls, and after coming back from the snap, kind of not knowing what's going on after Thanos, he's decided to set up S.W.O.R.D. along with the Skrulls, and whilst he's setting that up and setting up the operations of that, he's got Talos on Earth disguised as him, kind of like the life model decoys in the comics. And I like how Kevin Feige's done that, because I remember when they first announced the Skrulls, I thought it was going to be very much secret invasion kind of thing, but now I'm thinking he's kind of going to move off to that and move more onto life model decoys. And this opens up a whole new jar of questions, and Kevin Feige did say that in the future they were going to be doing more space space adventures. And looking back at Spider-Man Far From Home, they really did foreshadow it. For example, in the beginning of the movie when they're in Mexico, Maria Hill calls Nick Fury, Nick. Ah, uh, yeah, Jacob, that's his name. <laughs> you obviously didn't see Captain Marvel, because in Captain Marvel, he specifically says he only gets called Fury, Skrull. And then later when Fury's talking to Spider-Man, explaining that Mysterio's from Earth, just not yours. Right there. Why doesn't he say ours? Scroll. Boom. That's interesting. Anyway, in the post credit scene, Talos calls Nick Fury and says basically that he's messed up. And it turns out his main reason for being on Earth was to give Spider-Man Tony's glasses as kind of like a last present or gift or future memento. But as you saw, everything went ass up. You had the elementals that were the problem. And then that kind of moved into the plot because you know, the glasses were kind of like the MacGuffin of the film. So where now you ask? Well, I'm guessing we're going to see more galactic threats, and I can see more Avengers getting infiltrated by Skrulls. Well, not infiltrated, replaced. But they'll do that purposely to keep up appearances from threats, whilst the real Avengers are off doing other things in different parts of the world, different parts of space, different adventures. And what's going to happen to Spider-Man when the world thinks he's a threat and he's the villain of the story, and everybody knows who he is? I really like the execution, I've really liked the slow progression to building up to this, and I'm super excited to see what happens next. Speaking of what happens next, if you're really excited to see what's coming up, if you like these kind of videos, and if you're just overall as psyched as me for movies, content, things like that, make sure to leave a like and comment down below your thoughts, theories, all things like that about the MCU. I love hearing about them because when other people tell me stuff it really adds perspective and it might make me look at a bit of information that I haven't thought about before. And while you're at it, hit the subscribe button down below, turn on notifications because then you'll stay up to date. Thank you so much guys for watching and as always, whatever your passion is, work hard and be lucky. <laughs>